Before, we talked about what cloning was and how it works. We talked about therapeutic cloning and reproductive cloning and how basically you take a cell from the body and put it into an egg and then that's the foundations. After a spark, it begins to divide. We also talked about who is responsible, Han Dreisch and John Haldane in the previous video. In 1958, British biologist John Gurdon cloned frogs from the skin cells of adult frogs. This was 38 years before Dolly the Sheep. According to the Journal of Cell Biology, Sir John Gurdon's famous frog cloning experiments of the 1960s and 70s answered a question that had been hanging over cell biologists since before the turn of the century. Are the cells of an adult organism genetically identical to the fertilized egg from which they are derived? Briggs and King in the early 50s suggested that cells genetic material is irreversibly altered as they begin to differentiate. But Gurdon showed that this was not the case. By transferring the nuclei of adult frog cells into enucleated eggs, he obtained cloned adult frogs. This frog experiment would be an example of the somatic cell nuclear transplant that we talked about, where you take an empty egg and then you take a body cell and then you put the body cell in the empty egg, the egg reprograms it to grow after a shock is added to it. A few years later, Nobel Prize winning geneticist Joshua Linderberg advocated cloning and genetic engineering in an article in the American Naturalist in, the 19, uh, in 1966, and again the following year in the Washington Post. He makes special point of the problem of um, childbirth and then the fact that the human being's uh, head is too big for the women to pass these days and he also mentions that in genesis this is there's a correlation with that it's that man's brain has grown beyond what's safe and comfortable for anybody really however the expulsion from eating only postponed our access to the tree of life he says he states the ridiculous idea of genetic counseling playing an important role in the framework of personal decision and foresight for the immediate family of people, you know, wanting to get involved in the cloning. It can offer great negative cautions about inbreeding and recurrence of genetic disease and basically, you know, anything to make cloning sound good. Two methods he sort of talks about in his paper is... Algeny, which is genetic alchemy, and also uh, vegetable propagation. Now, algeny is chemical control of the genotype, and it's basically like genetic alchemy. So they want to use chemicals to alter different things within the genetic code. And the difference here is that you're directly editing the the source, you could say, instead of just taking a piece of the source and then letting that own piece grow and replicate on its own, original to the original. This man suggests regular sexual reproduction to be used for experiments and innovations, and not really as a day-to-day -day thing um, as it always has been with human beings. He wants it to serve as just another scientific tool. In fact, he suggests a tempered clonality culture where you would have the best of both worlds in his eyes where you could have, you know, the experimental, um, observable, reliable, method of cloning people that you already know what you want and what you want out of them and you just keep reproducing those over and over and over again and then on the other hand you have a certain select demographic that reproduces on its own just in case you want a new Einstein as he gave an example. He also mentions a military application. It says here at least in certain areas say soldiery it is almost certain that clones would have a self-contained advantage 
partially independent of, partially accentuated by, the special characteristics of the genotype which is replicated. This introverted and poten potentially narrow-minded advantage of a clonish group may be the chief threat to a plurastically dedicated species. The potential impacts of this could be devastating. It could mean that the world has a whole uh, population of cloned people that are under wraps. Maybe if, if everyone knows that they're clones, then uh, they fear being exposed and possibly destroyed or killed or whatever else. And this also leaves open the possibility of cloning ancient people because you can clone just about anybody. I mean, doesn't Barack Obama look like Akhenaten? So what if they just took and uh, did the methods here? I don't see even see how it's that hard, to be honest with you. In this paper, he infers that the path to algeny already opens up two major diversions of human evolution, clonal reproduction and introgression of genetic material from another species. Indeed, the essential features of these techniques have already been demonstrated in vertebrates, namely nuclear transplantation of amphibia and somatic hybridization of a variety of cells in culture, including human. Basically, he's making chimeras. Interestingly enough, chimera is a mixture of a lion's head, a goat's body, and a dragon's tail, or literally year-old she-goat, it says here. And it's from winter season, so it has its origins in the winter. Just keep that as a back note. It was represented a volcano as a volcano and as a winter storm, it says here. Very interesting. He talks about how people will have problems with subhuman hybrids or para-human hybrids, as they say, and experiments that lead to infants that are para-human or human, either way you'd want to look at it. And then, however, there is enormous scientific interest in organisms whose karyotype is augmented by fragments of the human chromosomes that, especially as we know so little in detail of man's biological and genetic homology with other primates. This is being and will be pushed in steps as far as biology will allow to larger and larger proportions of human genome in intact animals and to organ combinations and chimeras with varying proportions of human, subhuman, and hybrid tissue. The hybridization is likely to be somatic and the elaboration of these steps to make full use of nuclear transplantation to test how well these assorted genotypes will support the full development of a zygote. Experiments on the efficiency of human nuclear transplantation will continue on a somatic basis, and these tissue clones used progressively in chimeras. Human nuclei and individual chromosomes and genes of the karyotype will also be recombined with the cells of other animal species. These experiments are now well underway in cell culture. Before long, we are bound to hear of tests of the effect of do, uh, effective dosage of the human 21st chromosome on the development of the brain of the mouse or the gorilla. Extracorporeal gestation would merely accelerate these experiments. As bizarre as they seem, they are direct translations to man of classical work in experimental cytogenetics in fruit flies and in many plants. I mean, wow, they need no further evidence advance in algae just a small step in cell biology. That's pretty intense. He sparked a debate with conservative bioethicist Leon Cass, who wrote at the time that the programmed reproduction of man will, in fact, dehumanize him. Another Nobel laureate, James D. Watson, publicized the potential and the perils of cloning in his Atlantic Monthly essay, Moving Toward the Clonal Man in 1971. In his article, he summarizes the same methods that we've been talking about, where you take an empty egg, put a cell into it, grow it to a uh, blastocyst, and then you put it in a female. He also mentions that it doesn't have to be the same female that provided the egg, and uh, some other things like that as well. In his article, he expresses that um, boring meaningless lives of many women 
would be sufficient cause for their willingness to participate in uh, such experimentation, be it legal or illegal. So even in especially poorer countries or something like that, they would uh, be in a situation where they would be more likely to join something like this if approached. He expresses concern that religious groups will put a stand to this and that they have to use indirect methods to kind of propagate this whole thing. He kind of expresses as well to use the population explosion or overpopulation as a reason to get people on board with cloning. And you know how often they, they bring that up. It's all the time. And if you just take a plane plane ride, you'll see how much land is available. And there's so much land, you guys. There's so many different ways to live. Population is not a thing. It's not a problem. It's a thing, but it's not a problem. You know what I mean? It's absolutely not overpopulated. And they just want to make you think that over and over again. The last thing he says is that um, there is no American university which has the strength in experimental embryology that Oxford possesses. And, you know, Oxford, this isn't the first time I've talked about them being a, a, a weapon of evil. I've got so much more to share with you next time.